In this video, you will learn about keyed hash message authentication code, better known as HMAC. It is often the case that we want to prove the integrity of a message. That is, we want to be able to send a message over an untrusted network and know that it arrived unaltered, unlike what's happening here. Sometimes our message will be encrypted and sometimes it will just be plain text. In the latter case, we don't care that an adversary can read it, just that it remains unaltered when it arrives at the other side. Basically, we just need to prove that the message has not been altered. Well, you may be thinking, we could just take a hash of the message, but a hash alone will not work because the attacker could just alter the message and then compute the new hash for the altered message. But there are some solutions to this problem. We have already seen how the GMAC algorithm uses a secret shared key to create a hash of the message where the integrity of the message and hash pair cannot be compromised unless the adversary has the secret key. We've also seen how the hash can be encrypted with someone's private key into something called a signature. Then the signature can be decrypted with a public key back to a hash. Again, a method that cannot be compromised unless the adversary has the private key. And finally, we're about to learn about HMAC that also uses a shared secret key with a standard hashing algorithm such as SHA-1 or SHA-2. The first thing to be aware of is that with a hashing function, a minor change to the message makes a major change to the hash value. For example, here is the SHA-2 hash of ABCDEF and of ABCDEFG, where appending the G completely changes the hash. However, in theory, simply appending an additional string makes the algorithm susceptible to length extension attacks. Therefore, the actual algorithm used is shown here. It reads, from right to left, the key K is shortened via hashing or lengthened via padding with zeros to the hash block size. For SHA-1 and SHA-2, the hash block size is 512 bits. Therefore, if you have your choice, choose a 512-bit key. The key is then XORed with the hexadecimal value 363636 repeating to the same 512-bit block size. Now, the message is appended to the XORed key and the first hash is taken, where the hash, H, is typically a SHA-1 or SHA-2 hash. Then, the same block size key is XORed with a hexadecimal 5C, 5C, 5C repeating. To that value, the previous hash is appended and the final hash is taken. Now let's look at how the HMAC is used in the software defined perimeter. It is used in the single packet authorization or SPA algorithm where the SPA is defined as the universal ID of the client with the counter value and the hashed one-time password also known as hot P. Finally a GMAC of the previous values is added. Hot P which is based on RFC 4226 is the HMAC of a secret key and the value of the counter. The secret key is known to both the client and the controller, such that both can independently compute the hot P value from the counter. Here, we have our untrusted network. The client increments the counter and computes the hashed one-time password, where the hashed one-time password is the HMAC of the secret key and the counter. The counter and the hot P are sent across the network. On the other side, the controller independently computes the hot P and checks to make sure they are equal. If so, then this is a legitimate client. There you have it, keyed hash message authentication code, better known as HMAC, and how it is used in the software-defined perimeter.